In this lesson, we are looking at neural control pathways. Okay, just a couple of dot points this time, but still very interesting and important subject matter. All right, let's look at the nervous system. It's quite complex. So straight away, we can see there's two main sections. There's the central nervous system and there's the peripheral nervous system. Now, the central nervous system is just the brain and the spinal cord. Having said that, it, it seems simple. They're, they're quite important, obviously, right? Uh, they, these are pretty self-explanatory. But if we come down this side, the peripheral nervous system is every other nerve apart from the brain and the spinal cord. Um, and that, again, is, is separated into two sections, the motor pathways and the sensory, sensory pathways. Okay, now the sensory ones, they are the ones detecting change. So the sight, sound, pressure, pain, all that kind of stuff compared to the motor ones and these ones are instigating movement and, and it doesn't necessarily mean you know moving my arms and legs it could mean digestive movement um, that's part of of these motor neurons as well okay so even all that internal movement we don't usually think about all right the motor ones can then be separated in two different paths as well and we're talking somatic versus autonomic or voluntary versus involuntary. Okay, the somatic nervous system, all those things that we, we think about doing, they are voluntary. Okay, I'm lifting my arm up, I'm moving my head to the side, all that kind of thing, versus the autonomic, right? The auto part should give you a clue. It's things that occur without us thinking. So the um, the digestive system, the heart continuing to beat, all those things. Things like breathing will happen even when we're asleep. We can take control of it, but most of the time it is, is um, looked at under the autonomic nervous system. All right, and then we come down all the way. Our autonomic nervous system can be split into two again, into the, into the sympathetic or the parasympathetic. Now, these are really interesting ways of classifying our autonomic nervous system. And I, um, the sympathetic one is often called fight or flight, right? Fight, flight, or freeze. And it's energy creation. It's um, firing up your muscles. It's the adrenaline making your heart beat faster. All those kinds of things. Now, people in in um, high-paced jobs they're using that sympathetic nervous system all the time and that's why we also need to have this parasympathetic nervous division okay it's kind of the opposite to that sympathetic one and when you fire it up it's often called the rest and digest now it's all those things you wouldn't do when the sympathetic nervous system is firing it's uh, passing waste it's digesting food it's uh, it's when you're the things you do when you'd be more vulnerable in the wild for example right so so we talk about uh, swimming and eating because your body is trying to rest and digest and if you go swimming it's then also trying to keep your muscles firing which is quite challenging all right this is a neuron it's a nerve cell right um, and we talk about it in it's a single unit but all of these neurons bundled together make a nerve so some basic uh, anatomy of it a soma is the cell body it contains all the usual organelles including the nucleus and it manages all of the normal cell functions okay the all the other parts are just extra Right, so the nucleus is obviously in there. This is the axon. It is a long, single, thin extension that extends out from the soma and it sends impulses to other neurons or, or other things, okay? It usually only sends them in one direction uh, and they can definitely vary in length. The purple things that are depicted around the axon, this is known as the myelin sheath. Now, it's many layers of lipid and protein and it covers the axon. It's produced by these little cells called Schwann cells and it wraps around the axon. It insulates the signal being sent. It's kind of like the plastic casing around wires. Um, and there's demyelinating, so demyelinating diseases like multiple sclerosis. It can result in the nerve signals actually being sent in places they shouldn't go because that insulation isn't there all right next bit these are the axon terminals right terminal meaning where something ends so this is where the axon ends and it's where the electrical signal is actually being sent onto something new okay it might be passed onto a kind of effector like a muscle or into another neuron and the very last points are these arm-like projections at the top on the soma or the cell body. And these are called dendrites and they are arm-like projections and they receive impulses from other neurons and send them down uh, the axon. So quite a lot there, but they're quite interesting cells. As I said before, a bundle of these neurons actually stick together and then make what we call a nerve. Okay, nerves can be quite large. 
Now, our neurons come in all different weird shapes and sizes. Now, there are sensory neurons, there are interneurons, and there are motor neurons. They have lots of different names. You'll often see the interneurons called relay neurons. Sensory neurons are carrying impulses from the tissues and the organs to the CNS or to the brain and the spinal cord. Interneurons are interpreting these impulses and connecting these types of neurons together. And the motor neurons are the ones that are carrying the impulses from the brain and the spinal cord out to the muscles. In nerve signal transduction, when we're passing signals from where we need them to go, we have a situation where we've got um, the stimulus is being uh, input. It's you know it's being picked up by the receptor. In this case, it would be the optic nerve. They use a sensory neuron to send it into the brain or the CNS. There is a relay neuron or an interneuron, you know, passing that signal along. And then the body sends the signal back out to a motor neuron or the effector. And in this case, the effector is a muscle. This, well, it's a bit messy, sorry about that. It, it kind of it gets quite complex, but at the end of the day, that's what it is, right? Receptor, sensory neuron to the CNS, where there are relay neurons or interneurons. And then the motor neuron goes out to the effector, okay? All right, so we looked at the example there of the optical nerve, or the optic nerve, and that's what's going on there. And we can perceive dim light or we can perceive bright light. And what that's going to do in this case is change the effector. So if the uh, bright light is perceived, we will have our pupils actually constrict and let less light in. And if it's quite dark, our body uh, dilates our pupil to allow more light in. So it really does depend on what the stimulus is as to how the body's going to react. All right, a reflex arc is really interesting. I'm just going to remove this for a second. And signal transduction is great and it's incredibly fast. But if you're in a life-threatening situation or in a really dangerous situation, your body needs every tiny bit of time it can pick up. So our body uses a reflex to react appropriately, almost without thinking. And reflexes literally don't engage the brain until after the situation has happened. So the sensory nerve takes in the stimulus, but it only sends the signal to the spinal cord. Now, the spinal cord is still part of the CNS. That's fine but it's actually bypassing the brain and still allowing the effector or the muscle to make a move and they're involuntary movements so if you have a look at this here's your stimulus it's the, the painful pin in your skin the sensory neurons picking this up it is sending it and this is the spinal cord okay and it's got a little relay or interneuron in here and then it's sending that um, signal back out to the muscle as soon as possible. You will only feel that later on when your brain becomes engaged. So we have a situation, you know, where if we compare these two, it may not seem like the reflex arc actually saves much time, but it really does. Okay. So if you're, um, your reflex, you're talking about like blinking when something's thrown at your head, your pupil shrinking when bright light is turned on immediately, the normal signal transduction, you know, might just be seeing a hand and putting it up for a high five, swatting away a fly or whatever. But really, it's this bypassing of the brain that saves that extra time.